Good day everyone, welcome to my video here. This is the uh, Novation Launch Key 25 Mark II. Just be aware, before we open this up, there's another version out there which is also a Novation Launch Key 25, but it's a Mini. Now they're pretty much about the same size. Um, the Mini has a few less features. So this one does cost a little bit more, but I think it has a few things that you like on it, uh, a little bit more than the other one. Depends what you want to do. It has a few different features, so let's just get this out of the box and see what it looks like. I just want to give you a quick idea of what you're getting. You know, what it looks like and just the feel to the whole thing. Now, apparently this was designed in England and I did some looking. Of course, designed in England, made in China. Uh, not particularly happy about that, but you know, Gee whiz, it's hard to buy things that are made in normal countries, but... So let's get this out of here. Okay, so there's the unit there. Yeah, box is nice, looks good. No damage in the shipping. Honestly, I ordered this off the internet and it came like the next day. It's amazing. Like, why even go to the store anymore? It's almost, that's how good it is. So anyways, let's get this out of here. I'm, I'm really interested in, and I'm sure you are too, like just how it feels, like it feels like it's, you know, if it feels like it's just a light piece of garbage or if it actually has some, you know, I guess, uh, weight to it or you know if it feels like it's gonna work it doesn't feel really cheap so far so good so basically of course this is a you can hook this into your computer so it's a USB connection it's a it's a MIDI uh, keyboard so yeah it's it's really you use it for your uh, computer unless I thought I should mention that because maybe you weren't aware but anyways that's what it's for it feels good um, let's just, all right, yeah, okay. Uh, the knobs really feel nice, like there's, they don't feel cheap. They're kind of rubberized, which is nice. Slider on here, and the big difference between um, this one and the uh, Mini, this one has some modulation and pitch controls on it, which I think is really cool, and that's, I'm sure there's some other features, but this is really the reason I, I opted for this one. It costs a little bit more, but um, I think this will make it a lot more fun. And I'm not like a super musician or anything, so you know, don't get too excited. But I mean, it feels like it's made fairly well. Uh, on the back here, of course, there's the, uh, the USB. There's a power in, and this looks like a sustain. It says sustain. It must be for like an, an add-on pedal. And I believe, I sure hope anyway, uh, the USB is going to power this because they don't give you a an adapter for it. I'm going to assume that the USB powers this. Basically, it does come with software and uh, some sort of music software, but I wasn't really uh, wasn't really my concern because I'm using this with FL Studio. So I'm going to set it up, give it a try, and see if I can integrate it with FL Studio. And then, once I get that working, I'll show you how to set it up and all, all that for FL Studio. And then it does come with a, um, a software package also. Now, let me just see, what's the name of it here? I think it's called, let me just look here, Abalon. But anyways, it does come with some software for some music software. But there you go. I mean, initially it looks like everything's good. Feels nice. Doesn't feel cheap. It is pretty light, but I mean, yeah, it doesn't have a real cheap feel to it. So maybe it'll be all right. So I hope this helps you so far. And so I'm gonna go and uh, hook this up, do some testing, see what uh, it entails to get it hooked up uh, with my uh, FL Studio. And we'll go from there. So. Anyways, my initial thing is, that seems like it's alright. Alright, so, let's move on. 
So how do I install this keyboard? Step 1. Make sure your PC is completely powered down before you do anything. Don't hook up the keyboard, nothing. Make sure it's off, start up your PC, and just get it running. Okay, your computer's all started up, you're signed in. It couldn't be any simpler than this. This is the provided USB cord. Mine's blue, I don't know if they're all blue, but it's blue. So, plug in at the back of the keyboard, like so. And then just take the other end, plug this into one of your USB ports. Okay, and then once you plug it in, I mean, it's pretty standard procedure, uh, Windows, I'm on a PC, I'm just talking about Windows PC, Windows 10, this one is. Once it's plugged in, the PC is just going to go through that normal process with other, any other um, external device that you plug in. It's going to recognize it, and then it's going to install what it needs to install to make things happen. And pretty much there, it's identified the board. You know, just go through the window steps. I'm not going to show you on the screen. It's basic. So anyways, we're all good to go. And of course, right now, the keyboard is not going to do anything because you have to have some software. And in this case, I'm going to be using FL Studio. Uh, it can be version... The last one was version 12. The latest one is around version 20. They're both pretty much exactly the same. I'll show you how to set that up. And then we'll uh, be able to do some stuff on here. So again, this video is really the unboxing, uh, the simple hookup, sort of the steps involved. And now that we have the keyboard hooked up, you're gonna notice that your keyboard does not work. So we have FL Studio launched here. It doesn't really matter what version, uh, version 12, version 20, uh, whatever. But basically what you need to do, because most likely your keyboard's not gonna operate until you go over here to the options and I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening here. So we're in the options. Click on that, and there's a drop down, and there's the MIDI settings there. Click on that, and in most cases, well, the wizard, this window's gonna pop up, and in most cases, you're gonna see some info uh, here and down here. Don't worry about the stuff up here. Uh, again, this is basic, this is very general. Look at what's happening down here, because we might have to do some changes here, which is very common, just to get it working. So what you want to do, if these are not here, if there's nothing showing up in this input, you may have to go and click on the refresh device list, which is this button here. Okay, so once you do that, all should be good in theory. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here so you can see. You have these two rows here, so let's just select the first row. Now, it depends on your uh, keyboard. The uh, Novation software is probably going to show up just as it is, but it doesn't always select the proper keyboard. So, what you need to do, just highlight that, and what you want to look for is the Novation Launch Key MK2 Keyboard. Now, of course, I have it selected, so it is showing up here, and it's represented here. But if it just said Novation Launch Key, that's not good enough. If you have the MK2, it has to have MK2 or else it's not going to work. So you just click down on there, and that's going to bring in into a big list all kinds of things that FL Studio supports, and we want to look for the Launch Key MK2 keyboard. So click on that. And then again, let's go back up, and same thing down here. Very common that this just shows up as the Innovation Launch Key without the MK2. And again, highlight that, go back down to your controller type, and select the MK2 keyboard again. And really, like normally, if everything's working fine, this is all you need to do. And there you go. So your keyboard's now functional. Let me just close this window. Again, if you run into trouble, just put something in the comments. I might be able to address it. If not, I mean, there's lots of other great videos out there. 
But I like feedback. Uh, I'll work on other videos to tell you how to do some things that are a little bit more technical. Uh, the next thing that many people have an issue with with their keyboard, so it's working, but they're saying, so what's up with this? You know, well, here's a, a pitch bender and there's a modulation here, uh, but they don't do anything when I'm playing. If I'm holding it down a key and I do this, uh, it doesn't modulate anything, doesn't change the pitch. Like, why is that? Or why are these knobs up here not functional? Why, why can't I do anything with those, say, perhaps in the mixer? I'm going to show you what you can do with them. So very quickly here, I'm going to open up, um, oh, I don't know, we'll just, oh, I have the, uh, this is a guitar uh, slayer, just plug in. So for example, and again, like all these buttons, you can click on all the buttons, whichever plugin you're using, whatever musical instrument, um, you can click on any of these buttons and you would right click th on them. But we'll keep it, things very simple here. Now, this is the pitch bend, and you notice we did have a pitch wheel on this. Let's keep things simple. We'll right click on that. Even though there is a check mark on link to controller, you have to click that again. So I click that, and a window pops up. Then what you need to do, go over to your keyboard, and rotate this, and I'm just gonna show you over here. And you can see that, that it's moving back and forth. So now this has been, this has been assigned to that. And very easily I could have, for whatever reason, I could have assigned uh, any one of these other knobs to it or almost anything that's on the keyboard. So it's very versatile. Now I'm just going to show you a quick example with the, uh, with the, uh, mixer here so you know this contains all your tracks when you get it all set up and on the keyboard there are one two three four five six seven eight so you can assign these for your first eight tracks and the things that you can do for example you know if you have everything set up you might want to use the keyboard so you could click on the slider volume control say we're on the on track one here right click on it again click linked controller that window pops up and if I want to use this knob I'll start turning it and you see the sliders now moving so it's been assigned and you have to do that for each one assign, you know, assign whatever you want to whatever slider and another handy thing is so say this is the first I have this on track one or insert one and this controls the volume, but I may also, depending on what you're doing, and this is just an example of what I'm talking about, right here, this is a fader, like a left and right fader. So what you could do, again, right click on that, link to controller, window pops up, and you could go down, and you could use the second knob here to control the fade and why is that important in a certain sense because now if I had a track in there and I'm doing another recording or finalizing things I can adjust both I'm just gonna see if I can get both in here so I can adjust the volume and at the same time uh, using the uh, pan left and right or fade left and right um, because that's something you would not be able to achieve by just using your your mouse like well you can but it's not dynamic so that's what I'm saying just you can apply this to almost every window wherever there's some sort of a controller you can assign it to the keyboard however you like anyways I hope this was like a, a good little basic start good little explanation to get you going and uh, we can talk more about if there's interest, we'll talk more about putting stuff into the piano roll, how you get it into that, and then how to, uh, you know, move things around and edit your notes that you've played, stuff like that. But anyways, have a great day, and hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you again soon. Like, subscribe.